I was the first person from my school to go to Oxford University. And you have to ask why. Never have I felt so inspired, yet simultaneously lost, confused and out of place. I was a Muslim in a secular university surrounded by Christian history. And I didn't feel at home with Islam because of my sexuality. I remember walking into the college bar and these two guys were arguing and they wanted me to solve it for them. And they said to me, which one's better, Eton or Harrow? And I'd never heard of either. And when I told them, they were really surprised. And one of them said, how have you never heard of our schools before? And my response was, well, have you heard of Walthamstow Secondary School? So then, and then that sense of unbelonging then stayed with me again. I remember last year I was walking into a courtroom, um, into a magistrate's court, and one of the court staff mistook me for the defendant. So one of the reasons for writing the book was, to, I, I guess, to find a space for people like me. It's a fundamental part of our constitution, which isn't written down, that parliament over there has the final say on, on any changes in our law. So to see that as an obstacle seems to miss uh, a fundamental principle of how our society works. The executive, the, the prime minister and the government, are in this country accountable to us, the people, via our elected representatives, via parliament. That's very different to America, mm -hmm. where they directly elect their president. So if you silence parliament, are you in effect silencing the voice of the people? We live in an increasingly divided world, constantly being asked to pick a side. Left, right, black, white, rich, poor, gay, straight, Muslim, Christian, binary, non-binary. Our networks operate in silos. And so even when I'm asked to speak at events, I'm either asked to speak for the LGBT network or the, or the BAME network. And one of my favourite writers is a woman uh, called Audrey Lord, And she wrote that there is no such thing as a single issue cause because we do not lead single issue lives. The Japanese believe that there is beauty in the broken. They'll take a smashed bowl and instead of throwing it away, they'll glue the pieces back together with golden resin. And I feel that way about identity. I was born whole but quickly broken into separate pieces by societal expectations and cultural norms. And the exercise of my life has been to find a way of putting these seemingly irreconcilable parts of me back together so that the whole of me is more beautiful than the separate parts ever could have been.